You don't have to emotionally hedge on this. The Green Bay Packers should beat the Chicago Bears. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Today's Friday Locked On Packers brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. I guess we're not at the start of the season anymore. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I've heard a lot of this this week. The, well, the Packers should win by two touchdowns, so of course that means it will be a tight game late. I understand it. It's the emotional hedging a fan does so they don't get disappointed. Because what our brain tells us is that every time we've ever thought our team was going to win big, they lose. That's what our brain tells us because we have a bias toward the things that stand out in our memory the most, the times when we were hurt. No one remembers that time that they thought the Packers were going to beat, let's say, the Cardinals a couple weeks ago by a bunch and they beat the Cardinals by a bunch. No, what you remember is is that time in 2018 when you thought the Packers were going to beat the Cardinals by a bunch and they lose and it gets Mike McCarthy fired. That's what your brain remembers. This Packers team is better than this Chicago Bears team. Everywhere it matters. Everywhere it matters. This is a better coach in Green Bay by a mile. It's a better quarterback in Green Bay by a mile. It's a better offense in Green Bay by a mile. And it's a better defense in Green Bay. I know that seems weird to say because the Chicago Bears have a very good passing defense. But this is one of the worst run defenses in football. 30th by DVOA. They cannot stop the run. All the money they're paying to those linebackers, all of the money that they've invested, the draft picks that they've invested in that front, and they still cannot stop the run. And I'm talking about against teams who previously couldn't run the football. The Patriots ran it all over them. Patriots couldn't run it on anyone all season. So I understand Wanting to protect yourself. But anyone who's listened to this show for any length of time knows that I believe in expectation setting. And it's important to go into the game knowing, and I think anyone that says, I think this is going to be a close game, knows that the most likely outcome is that the Packers win this game by a touchdown or more. That doesn't mean that they will. That's why we watch this silly game. It's why we love this silly game. Because outcomes that we don't expect happen all the time. But there's more to this. I said this to Lauren on our crossover Thursday. If the only thing you can come up with as a reason why the Bears forget win can keep this close is they fired their offensive coordinator. Let's just think about this for a second. This That's a vibes-based argument. The dead cat bounce. 
Very common in soccer. Actually, it seems like pretty reliable in soccer, honestly. But the vibes on the rest of the team, DJ Moore walked off the field in the middle of a play and then neither he nor Matt Eberflus could agree on what happened. Players have openly questioned the game plans, have openly questioned in-game decision-making by the head coach. And now that Shane Waldron is fired, Keenan Allen says, oh, he should have held us all accountable when Keenan Allen, that's part of what you were brought to Chicago to do is to be a veteran leader, to set a standard and to hold your, your teammates accountable. Uh, there were multiple times in the game, Caleb Williams gets hit, knocked down, sacked, and he's got offensive linemen just looking at him. They make a big play. The sideline does nothing. This team has quit on its coach. They have quit on this season, and I'm not convinced that they haven't quit on this quarterback. The vibes in Chicago are brutal. And you think a minor vibes adjustment the other way is something to be scared of? Here's the deal. If you are a serious playoff team, forget NFC contender, just a serious playoff team, you win this game by two touchdowns because the Bears have hit something close to rock bottom. And you are 6-3, and three, fighting and scratching and clawing in the NFC North. You're already down 0-2 in the division standings. This is the Bears' first division game. And for a lot of those guys, guys like Romo Dunze and Keenan Allen and Caleb Williams, it is their first taste of the Packers-Bears rivalry. It's in Chicago. But guess what? That fan base is on fire right now. You go up 7-0, 10-0 in Chicago... They will be heading for the exits. That's the, and and if the Packers blow them out, the Matt Eberflus era might be over. It might be the first time in Bears history they fire a coach in season because this is untenable. So the Packers are better on offense, better on defense. They have a better coach. They have a better quarterback. They've got a better record. They're better. They've been better all year. The quarterback is getting healthy. Adam Stenovich mentioned the bye week came at a perfect time for Jordan Love, getting his legs back under him. Matt LaFleur said the last two practices, energy has been really good. The practice has been really good. This team understands what is in front of it. The opportunity that they have. You heard Evan Williams earlier in the week, talk about what he has heard from the older guys is how special these moments are that they don't come around often and that you have to take advantage of them when you have them. That's what this team has an opportunity to do. And when you have that opportunity, it can't be squandered. And it can't be squandered against a division rival that has given up on the season that just lost to one of the most pathetic teams in the league by 16 that just got its doors blown off by a team that the Packers demolished. I know the transitive property does not exist in football, but the Cardinals haven't lost since the Packers beat the crap out of them. And that includes a dominating win of the Chicago bears that, that Arizona defense, not exactly World beaters. They're not exactly the 85 Bears. They clamped the Chicago Bears offense. Clamped them because they can't pass protect. And Caleb Williams is taking sacks at a crazy high rate. He's taking bad sacks. The Patriots put together the blueprint. Change the picture on him. And you can get to him. Show pressure looks. Simulated pressures. Run games up front and you can confuse this offensive line. And Caleb has no answers. I don't care that they have a new offensive coordinator. We have no evidence that he is a capable player or capable coach. And you're only going to be able to institute so much change in one week. So, okay. 
it seems pretty obvious who the favorite in this game is. And again, the point is not to say that they definitely will win. It's that if they don't, we have to be able to correctly frame the disappointment level, the embarrassment, frankly, that it would be to lose to your division rival when they are in free fall and you are fighting for an NFC crown. Go out, meet the moment, match the intensity of the purpose and beat the crap out of your division rival. Now, I think they have an opportunity to go on a run here in the second half for all the same reasons they did last year. We're going to talk about it next on Locked on Packers. With big wireless providers, what you see is never what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month's bill, the price you thought you were paying magically skyrockets. You ever notice that? Well, with Mint Mobile, you'll never have to worry about gotchas ever again. When Mint Mobile says $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. Say bye, bye bye see ya to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills and unexpected overages. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans starting at $15 a month. All plans come with high-speed data, unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone along. All your existing contacts, bring them with. Ditch wireless plans that are overpriced and get Mint Mobile's deal to get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. You get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month. To get it, go to mintmobile.com slash locked on NFL. That's mintmobile.com slash locked on NFL. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash locked on NFL. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three month plan only. Speed slower than 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Today's episode also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Get ready for the end of being bored watching some mediocre games. Some mediocre games when you're not watching the Packers, of course. And have some skin in the game. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, gets you ready. New customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. They give you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. Packers, still comfortable favorites in this one. I also, I like the over because I think the Packers are going to be able to score points. They're going to be able to run on the Bears. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This was the time last year when Jordan Love took off. And this offense hit a level we didn't know at the time it was capable of reaching. Now, we do know. And I have been amused this week. I even went on a a Bears podcast. And they mentioned the Packers offense struggling. That was the word that they used, struggling. They're fifth in offensive DVOA. Fifth. They're an elite offense. And one could, I think without a tinge of bias, suggest that they are struggling. And that is in part because they do not look like the team we saw at the end of last season, at least not with any consistency. They did against the Cardinals. And that's about it. But the circumstances that led to Jordan Love And the white hot end of the season that he had are in place yet again, except they're starting from an even higher spot. They're starting from a position of strength and have the potential for significant improvement. That's the beauty of where they find themselves right now. The offensive line coalesced last year. They don't really need to coalesce. 
They're doing fine. If they could run block a little better, just like a little, that would be great. That would be useful. But in terms of pass protection, they're already doing a a really good job. Top three, top five, if we're being uncharitable, frankly. Okay. So Jordan Love probably going to have pretty pretty good time to, to throw. If they could open up a little more in the run game, that'd be nice. But beggars can't be choosers here. But what else was plaguing the, the Packers offense last year? Drops, miscommunications, self-inflicted mistakes. Well, what didn't really happen in the second half of last year? I, I continue to say and insist that the biggest difference in the Packers in the second half of last year was not Jordan Love. It was everyone else. It was everyone else. And Matt LaFleur talked about this yesterday. They are a top 10 offense in scoring. Despite being one of the worst red zone teams in the league. Think about that. Think about how crazy that is. One of the highest scoring teams in the league is having issues scoring in the red zone. And by the way, for the first quarter of the season, they did not have a kicker who could make anything. So it wasn't like they're just like Brandon Aubreying it and they're getting a bunch of field goals and and they're doing it that way. No, no. It's self-inflicted. It's the penalties in the red zone. It's the penalties in plus territory. It's the drops on third down. Those are the things that in the second half of last year changed. Because it wasn't the penalties so much as it was the mental mistakes. The, I, I forgot to run a route on an RPO and Jordan Love has no one to throw to. Something that happened in a freaking playoff game last year. It's, oh, the spacing on this route concept sucks. And so there wasn't the opening that there should have been because the spacing was bad. That stuff, you just don't expect for a good team to carry over for an entire season. These guys are professionals. They're really good. The law of averages says they're just not going to execute at that level. They're not going to commit that many crucial mistakes in crucial situations in the second half. There's also, and this wasn't something that happened in the first half, but it it did happen, um, or last year, but it did happen this year, is Jordan Love got hurt. Jordan Love is getting healthy. We haven't really seen him healthy all year. Not, Not truly, truly healthy. And the closest we saw, they sliced and diced the Cardinals. And they, Jordan Love threw three touchdown passes against one of the best defenses in the league. And then on a have to have it drive, they just sauntered. Just, just a jaunty walk right down the field to get into range for Brandon McManus. And it wasn't like he had to hit some 56 yard field goal. I mean, it was, it was a little longer than a chip shot, but it was, that was going in. And then he got hurt again. Jordan loved being healthy in the second half. The drops regressing to the mean a little bit. The penalties regressing a little bit. And there's there have been some really, really dubious holding calls. But like the Lions have had one drop. The Packers had four on third down just against the Lions. Those sorts of things are not going to hold over the course of the season. Now, like you look at the 49ers last year, historically low drop rate, Brock Purdy, the benefit of ridiculous drop luck. Jordan Love wasn't. But in the second half, guys more consistently made those plays. Dontavian Wicks has not made a contested catch yet. 0 for 9. That's probably not going to sustain. He gets open. You look at all the advanced metrics. Open constantly. And yet... When it comes to finishing the play, just can't, can't right now. But, but as I've been saying all year, they have the answers on the team. It's more Christian Watson. It's more Josh Jacobs. It's more Romeo Dobbs. It's more Tucker Craft. And then when Jordan Love can get healthy, 
he's going to be able to maneuver in the pocket better, extend plays better. I mean, there have been times this year, and I think that pick six against the Lions was one of them, where Jordan tried to move to get a better angle to Josh Jacobs and couldn't. He couldn't move well enough. And so if he can actually get his legs underneath him, he's going to be able to throw with more purpose, with more decisiveness, with more zip. And he's going to be able to play a little more outside of structure, even more sort of mid-structure where you get to the top of your drop, you've got to slide to escape pressure, and it's just a slide and then go versus trying to get the ball off because you're not sure if you can slide, reattach, get reset and throw. And then I think one thing that, for example, this week, Matt LaFleur talked about is they got some new stuff in. Unscouted looks. Stuff that teams haven't seen yet. And they probably will not use it all against the Bears. They've got the 49ers coming next week. They've got the Lions again here. They've got the Vikings again here. They've got some, they got a chance later in the season to put together some new stuff. And this is one of the most creative, one of the most uh, unique and adventurous design staffs in the league. Is Jordan Love going to throw 18 touchdowns and one interception down the stretch? Probably not. Probably not. But frankly, he could throw more touchdowns. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we're sitting here at the end of the season and in the second half, he threw 20. He just might have three or four interceptions instead of one. It's coming. This team is going to find it. They are going to click and it is going to be scary for the rest of the league. Fifth in offensive DVOA and they've played like meh football and a backup quarterback for two and a half weeks. I told you before the season, if they stay healthy, if the quarterback and Christian Watson stay healthy, they're going to be the best offense in the league. I continue to believe that if those two things are true through the end of the season, and I know the Baltimore Ravens are on a historic pace right now, that is probably going to cool off. They can be the best or one of the two or three best offenses in the league. They're already right there and they haven't even played that great. They haven't even played that great. It's all out there in front of them. All right, I want to finish up with a little a little tweak. A little tweak that Matt LaFleur made that actually turns out is a is a big deal. We'll finish up next on Locked on Packers. Time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it scrolling through some mind-numbing content for hours and hours, unless it's the Locked on Packers Instagram page or TikTok. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? How about history? How about economics? Great works of literature. Did you study that in school? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Maybe it's time for a refresher. Time and technology have changed a lot of things, but they've not changed the basic fundamental truths about the world and our place in it. Our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including things like The Great American Story and The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, uh, introduction to free market economics, the meaning and the history of the Constitution. All of Hillsdale's courses are f- self-paced, so you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Right now, go to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost. It's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register hillsdale.edu slash locked on. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. Now for your second listen, go find the new Locked On NFL now with two shows every day. First, the madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL espresso. Then stop by the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. Find Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. We've talked about this play action question. Why are the Packers not going under center more? Why are they not using play action more? I wrote about it earlier in the week. And then Matt LaFleur, two days ago, provided an answer. And the answer was interesting. It wasn't uh, under center versus not. But he made a distinction. He said, actually, there are calls that they have 
that they might not even consider play action. But we might. And the reason is that certain calls that are traditionally play action are specifically almost a mirror of a run concept. So the great example is that split flow zone play action play where it's the boot, the play action fake, the tight end is coming across the formation. And instead of blocking the end, which is what they would do in split flow zone, they're leaking out and it's a little dump off. And then off of that, sometimes they will have that split flow zone. It's not a boot. It's just a hard play action fake. And then they're trying to hit something over the top. What Matt LaFleur said is, we're, we're not doing that as much anymore. And instead, they are trying to match pre-snap motion, formation personnel, and then likely run downs and not messing with the protections. I almost said a different word. <laughs> Um, they're not messing with the protections. And, and the point of this is that they don't have Mercedes Lewis anymore. They don't have a tight end who can just play tackle. And so they're not, they're not asking Tucker Craft to go block Daniil Hunter or Jonathan Grenard or Montez Sweat one-on-one -on -one and hold up long enough so that Jordan Love can take a shot down the field. What they're doing instead. And I wrote about this for the leap. You can go. I have some examples in there. There's There was a play against the Lions. They hit that, that deep comeback to Christian Watson. Off play action under center. But it just sort of looks like a run. And it just looks like, a, like an inside zone run. With two tight ends. It's a run down. It's a run personnel grouping. And it's a run formation. But they don't move anybody. And it's all big for big. It's all big on big blocking. Except both of your tight ends are chipping and releasing. You're getting them out into the pattern rather than asking them to block an edge rusher. Incredible stuff. What an idea. And, and I'm, I'm being facetious about that. But it seems in retrospect so obvious that you wouldn't want to do that. That you wouldn't want to give up an advantage in the process of trying to create another advantage if you could avoid it. And it worked in this case. And the beauty thing about it is, so the linebackers who would otherwise be in some sort of spot drop or they would just sort of be zoning off if they were in man and the tight ends were staying in. Maybe they'd be, maybe they would late blitz. But they were held up by those releases and allowing a window for Jordan Love to get the ball into Christian Watson. If they had been dropping, if it had been some zone coverage and they're hauling ass out of there and they're closing down that window to throw that deep comeback or at least making it muddy for you. You just drop the ball to Tucker Craft, and it's a four-yard play that can be a 12-yard play or a 15-yard play. It's actually terrific design. And so while I have been dubious, loudly, loudly dubious on this show, that they have been using play action so differently because of game plan, that, that was always the excuse. I mean, I played the clip on the show of Jordan saying, yeah, you know, it was Minnesota, we changed it because I was, you know, hurt, but... I'm fine now. This is really more a game plan thing. And I kind of like wanted to call BS on that. They've been so clandestine about the whole, you know, will, is he going to play? Is he not? Is he practicing? Is he not? All that stuff that I was just like, I, I don't know why they would be honest about this now. But I I have to offer at least half an apology. I mean, we still don't know if if this is the only reason. If, if there was no factor from the injury, I find that hard to believe. But there's been a point to changing the way that they do play action because now you can do it from the gun. Great play, first game of the season. Jordan Love's healthy. From the gun, 
They fake an, an inside give and Elton Jenkins pulls. Power run. But it's a fake. The linebackers eat it. They're going to their left. Tucker Craft was lined up on their left and he sneaks back across the formation right there. I'm not even sure they've run this play since then. Maybe one or two times since then. And Tucker Craft got wide open, big gainer. Actually, now that I think about it, it might be the play that Tucker Craft scored on against the Rams. I'll have to go back and look. The kind of thing that I think they could use to get Tucker Craft involved more often. But they move out in Jenkins, but you've still got big on big everywhere. You're not giving up anything, but you're still creating that illusion that it's a run. You're pulling the guard. That is classic run tell. You don't traditionally pull the guard in a protection unless it's a, a certain certain kinds of rollouts. You might do that, but it's it's a run faint or it's a run. And the linebackers don't know which one until it's too late. So it's a subtle tweak. And the Packers, as I wrote, are better on play action. Jordan Love, seventh in EPA per play on play action this year was 10th last year. And it's not just a better relative to Pierce thing. Like they're better, better. 0.2 EPA per play versus 0.3, which is a huge difference. That's like the difference between being the best quarterback in the league on a down-to-down -down basis. So all play action, all passes. And like the 8th or 10th. So it's a huge difference. It's a big improvement this year. And it's working. If anything, they should be doing it more. That That's all I would say. And I, and I wonder, because now they can do it from the gun, if they will. If we'll see them do it more. If the self-scouting, they see the same thing that we did. We'll see. Packers beat the Bears. I've been saying 27 to, or 27 to 17, 24 to 14, 10 points. I've kind of come around. I think this is going to be like 27 to 13. It's going to be two, a two touchdown game. That's what I think. I think the Packers beat the Bears comfortably. And I get to come on here on Monday and say, see, you shouldn't have, you did not need to emotionally hedge. We'll be live uh, on our YouTube page after the game on Sunday. Um, I promise if I'm, if I'm really right, I won't, I won't brag too much. I really won't. Um, follow me on all the social medias, which includes Blue Sky now. Um, if you want to be over there, I'm still going to be on Twitter. I'll be on both. So if you're someone who does not want to be on Blue Sky, I get it. Stay on Twitter. If you don't want to be on Twitter and you want to be on Blue Sky, I get it. I'll be on both. I'll be there. I'll be there for you. Um, and then of course, Locked on Packers, wherever you can find social media, you'll find us and, um, go subscribe on YouTube so you can hang out with us live after the game. So you can stay Locked on Packers.